What's up guys, welcome to Talking Poodoo, a Star Wars show where today I am reviewing the latest entry in Star Wars The High Republic, The Rise and Storm by Kevin Scott. This is a continuation of Light of the Jedi. There have been other novels and books in between that, although they're more set around the same time as Light of the Jedi. Here we are, about one year later they say, and they're building up to the Republic Fair to celebrate the Republic and coming together and peace and so on and so forth. All that usual Republic crap. But anyway, what did I think of this book? I think it was good on the whole. I didn't quite enjoy it as much as Light of the Jedi for reasons I will get into. Although I do think half of this book is good if not better than Light of the Jedi. Again, we'll get into the finer points of it so on and so forth. But yeah, this is a good book. I think it's a decent continuation of Light of the Jedi. It opens up much more possibilities for the future of the High Republic franchise. It also raises some more questions about what this franchise element is going to be and how long is it going to be and how long is it going to drag out and so on. Drag out being the key word here. So let's get straight into some of the finer details then. Story. The first half of the book is building up to this Republic Fair. It's made very clear that that's going to be the highlight of this book. Much in the same way in that the first book, the first half of the book was very much about this incident, the big great disaster they call it. Well, this time around it's building up to something rather than having to start with that thing. So the first half of the book is very character driven. It shows you all the different viewpoints of different characters, what they're doing, getting ready for things. There's a lot of good dramatics in there, a lot of good character building. I liked it a lot. It was very fun, very entertaining, lots of different things going on, and then they all start to converge on this Republic Fair. And note that I'm reading these books on a Kindle, so when I say the first half of the book, I know exactly what percentage we are in. I can tell you 48% way through the book, that's when this stops. But it was very fast paced, very enjoyable, very entertaining for the first half of the book. And that's not to say that the second half of the book wasn't, that it was just very different. So the problem starts at about 48% through the book, about halfway through, when we do get to the Republic Fair and then the story kind of takes a, just a pause, it stops. Everything before the Republic Fair, it seems like it's developing a bunch of different characters, a bunch of different possibilities, a bunch of different stories, and then it stops and it dwells on this Republic Fair, this one long moment, and it takes a long, long time from 48% through the book all the way to about 85%. That's all the Republic Fair stuff. And again, very entertaining, very fun, very enjoyable. But it does feel like they are dragging things out a bit. There's not a lot of story progression through there. And without spoiling it too much, to say that the Republic Fair moment is one long action scene does mean that it gets a little repetitive, it gets a little tedious. It's like, come on, let's just get on, we we'll get it. There's action going on, people are dying, people are fighting. It's like, how much do you need to drag this stuff out? it becomes a little disappointing in the end. Especially when, when you think about what Star Wars is. These books so far, Light of the Jedi, felt like it could have been a movie. This book feels like it could have been a generic sci-fi action movie in that it does hammer down the action so much this time around. It goes into a lot of gory details sometimes as well, where it's talking about people's faces getting busted open and swelling up and yeah. A lot of really stuff that's out there a little on the more violent side for Star Wars. But it feels like it's kind of losing the point at, at certain places because it's amping up the action so much. Star Wars isn't necessarily an action movie. Yes, action is a key part of all the Star Wars movies and properties. But there's so much more going on than just action. And I feel like halfway through this book, the writer kind of forgets that. And halfway through the book, it feels like he kind of loses the soul of the story a bit. And there are questions as to why that's happening. You could argue maybe that there isn't enough story here. Maybe they haven't quite thought things through or maybe they are trying to deliberately drag things out so that they're not going through the story as quick as they should be or could be. But then after that, we get into the finale, the third act of what would be a movie finale. And it, the problem is between the Republic Fair and the finale, so we're talking again, at this point, we're talking about 85% through the book. So not a lot left. The final 15% feels very rushed. It feels like they go from one action scene, then there's a couple of chapters where they're dwelling on things, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we've got a plan, let's do it. Then to, straight to another action moment. And then the book kind of stops. It just stops abruptly and ends. There's very little, there's no closure, there's no epilogue. It feels like this is half a book. 
and it's really frustrating. Yes, it left me wanting more, yes, it opens up a lot of interest and cool mysteries, but at the end of the day, I felt like there was half a story in here, then the rest was just action. And then there was nothing afterwards to like wrap anything up or to provide any closure. And this is, of course, the second book in a series. How long is the series going to be? I don't know. Should I expect every book in this series to be the same way, where we get some story but a bunch of action? I have no idea. And that's a problem I've got with the High Republic at the minute, is that so much of this is nebulous, so much of this is unclear. How long is this going to go on for? We know there are different stages that they planned out, but what does that mean exactly? Is the first stage going to be like an original trilogy? kind of thing and then the second stage is going to introduce like a different time period or whatever I don't know so much is in the air and it's frustrating so one of the elements that's not in the first book at all Light of the Jedi is the Drengia so the Drengia if you've not been reading the side books the young adult stuff or the comic books you'll have no idea who the Drengia are and this book doesn't seem to care about the Drengia the Drengia are set up as a major threat outside of the Nihil in some of the side stories and content. And this book merely just brings them and says, oh yeah, elsewhere in the galaxy the Drengia are a thing, but you don't need to worry about that. So I was like, right, should I even bother reading some of this side stuff then? How important are the Drengia going to be? Are they going to be feeding into this main narrative, this main ongoing adult novel stuff? Or are they just going to be relegated to the young adult stuff? Are they just going to be in the comic books? I don't know. But it seems like the Drengia aren't important at all at this point. So that's a little disappointing. Because I spent a significant amount of time reading some of the side stuff. The Drengia were getting built up and then just not even relevant here. And it's also worth saying that the Drengia, like I said, aren't in the first book. So if you're not reading the side stuff, you have no idea who they are. So they've actually quite smart just to bring them up and mention them and quickly sum up that they are monstrous plant beings so that's great but again it felt like they were trying to do something bigger with them so to talk about the characters a bit more one of the criticisms I had of the first book was that there was a lot of characters the first book had to cram in a lot of characters a lot of story ideas a lot of elements because it was introducing this whole new time period it kept jumping every chapter in the first book almost was changing character perspective it was hard to keep track of who was who it's hard to keep track of what everyone's location was and so on and so forth this book does a much better job of it in that it hones in on just a handful of characters the first book if i remember rightly avar chris was the main character but there was an argument to be made that to be made that maybe she wasn't because she was only here and there this time around, it's very clear who the main characters are. It's Stellan Geos and Elzar Man. Two Jedi who are... Elzar is in the first book, Stellan's mentioned in the first book. So these two are very much the main characters here, and it's great that we get focused in on them. Again, the first half of the book really dives into them as characters and their relationship. There's a lot of hinting about their relationship and their relationship with Avar, suggesting that there's unusual Jedi relationships going on here. It's not quite what you would expect from Jedi. And that's interesting stuff. But again, second half of the book, very action focused. It delves into Elzar and maybe he's not quite the good guy Jedi that we want him to be or what he should be, arguably, I don't know. But there's a lot of hint in this stuff in that second half. But it is worth saying that outside of these two characters, a lot of the characters in this book are still underdeveloped a little bit. They are very one note let's say and this book is much more interested in telling a story than it is in diving into the characters it is only really Stellan and Elzar whose character psychology we really get to dive into who we really get to see their motivations and it's a little disappointing that anytime we're focusing on someone else it's not quite as interesting we do get a new character introduced this time around called Ty Yorick her first introduction she is very fascinating because she is a essentially a mercenary for hire but she has a lightsaber how does she have a lightsaber well a lot of hinting going on here and that's kind of where her story ends in that she's introduced very fascinating very interesting very cool and then the book does really nothing with her she comes back later on she's a bodyguard she's been hired for someone and then the rest of her stories rush she's kind of just one of many people in the crowd and 
constantly just hinting that, hey, she used to be a Jedi. Hey, she's only had some training. She's not good with the Force, but she's good with a lightsaber. And it's like, right, a lot of hinting here, but you're not actually telling us anything. You're not showing us anything. So her character kind of becomes really disappointing in that she's set up to be something really cool, really important, and then she's just part of the crowd, and that's disappointing. And her arc, her transition from what she is at the beginning to what she ends up being at the end is very rushed. There's this moment about, I would say two thirds of the way through, where she makes a decision and it's very just out of nowhere. It feels out of character, out of place. It feels forced even. And yeah, it's odd. It makes, it shifts her character from being one thing to being another thing very quickly. And there's little explanation for it. Especially when before this, she was being very extreme, very aggressive and violent and so on, to then suddenly become the exact opposite is really bizarre. And it does try to explain it as, hey, it's the Force. And that's one of the problems here is that a lot of what they're doing, a lot of the fantasy elements is they're just summing up, oh, it's the Force. Yeah, just, yeah. Sum it up as the Force, that'll do. It's like, right, need a bit more than that. One of my criticisms of Light of the Jedi was about the villains, the Nihil, I thought were interesting, but I didn't feel like they were a huge threat to be facing the Jedi. It felt like they were just pirates and smugglers and so on. This book does a really good job of addressing that point in particular. The threat of the Nihil is amped up big time this time around. They are very much established as being a significant threat to the Jedi. And great, they took my criticism of the first one and they've improved on it. Who'd have thought it? But yeah, the Nihil threat is now much more significant. They are much more dangerous and deadly. They really dive into the villains side of things this time around where in the first book, it was very much all about Martian Rowe trying to succeed and become the leader of this group. This time around, it shows that, hey, there are other people amongst the Nihil and they're all vying for power and control in certain ways. They're all greedy and selfish. And it does a really good job of showing that the Nihil leadership isn't as steady as you would think. And I don't want to get into too many spoilers there. But yeah, it does a really good job of diving into the Nihil, what makes them tick, what they're doing, how significant a force they are. There is some fantasy elements included there, which I'm not too keen on yet. A lot of it is kind of vague, especially since it's establishing something early on and then it pays off towards the end, but still very vague. I think the next book's going to dive into that a bit further. But yeah, a lot of that stuff I'm a little unsure about. But I've also, I've kind of mentioned this already, Eivor Chris. In the first book, Light of the Jedi, like I said, there was an argument that she was the main character. She was established as being the main character of the High Republic. Only this book, she has a very brief cameo. She's mentioned here and there all over the place, but in this book, she has a very brief cameo. She has like one line of dialogue and it's mentioned how she's off somewhere else in the galaxy doing her own mission. So it's like, right, she's not the main character. Right, that means then what exactly should I expect from the rest of this series? Should I expect to see Ava or Chris again? Is Elzar Man going to be the main character? Is the next mainline book going to have someone completely different in the main character role? Is it constantly going to shift perspectives? If so, that could be interesting. It could really work. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but... It just, it is a little disappointing that it established Ava or Chris as the main character, only to then have her not appear at all in this. It was like, oh, oh, that's disappointing. I kind of liked her. But yeah, it could work out and it could be a great thing. It just remains to be seen. So let's get into a few miscellaneous points then. In terms of how it's actually written, I don't like to criticize the writing so much because hell, it just doesn't seem right. So I talk about the story and the characters and what it's actually doing rather than the way it's written. But I do think that the way this is written is very fun, very accessible. It's almost written as if it is a script, but not in script format, if that makes sense. So I think this is the sort of book that anyone can pick up and read and enjoy. It's not too detailed. There aren't any complicated words or anything like that. It's very straightforward, very to the point. It just tells you the bare basics of what you need to get this story conveyed across to you. And it works really, really well. And it's a very fast paced, enjoyable, thrilling read because of that. It's not like one of these big epic books where there's a lot of detail, there's a lot of description and so on. It just gets straight to the point. Here's the character, here's what they look like. Oh, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing that. Oh, 
this person's got this going on, this person's got that. It doesn't dwell on anything too long, it just keeps things moving at a really good pace. And I like that. So there is one side story that's introduced about a third of the way through, in that Lena So, the Chancellor, has a son. And the son comes into this and he gets into some shenanigans, let's say. And that's kind of his story. Yeah. There's a side story focusing on the sun, which really does not need to be there. It should not be there, plain and simple. So it's a bit distracting. There's a couple of instances of this where there are characters in here who arguably do not need to be getting as much attention that they are, and yet they are. So the sun in particular, the sun is gay, it's hinted at, which fine, brilliant. I'm all full of diversity. That's one of the things I actually want to get into right now is that there's a hell of a lot of diversity in this. Lots of different characters, lots of different aliens and races and sexualities and all sorts. The bunch of diversity, the variety, the support of the LGBTQ+, so on, is brilliant. There's tons here. Lots, something for everyone to relate to, something for everyone here to like. And But the problem is with the son's relationship, the son's elements in this book do feel forced in. It feels like they've put this character in here and put this very small side story. He's only in like three or four chapters in the whole book. And he's, it just feels like they're inserting it for the sake of having it. It felt like they were trying to have LGBTQ plus content in there just so they could say they got LGBTQ plus content. It's like, hey, we've got this side story here that's about a gay character. So, you know, we're supporting this community. It's like, mm, well, it's completely unnecessary. It doesn't need to be there. It doesn't add to the story. It isn't relevant to the story at all. You could totally remove this element from the story and it would play out exactly the same. So that's saying something. The character himself isn't interesting. He's just a weird, like, geeky kid. And that's it. That's all that is to his character. But we do dwell uh, quite a bit on him. And it's just weird. It feels like a distraction. It feels completely unwarranted and unneeded. But I am all for the diversity. I do like how there are members of the LGBTQ plus community in this book. I do like how it is got different races and ethnicities and aliens in there as well. Lots and lots of variety. It really feels like a lived in, breathing world or galaxy of characters and it's brilliant because of that. Just this one story inclusion did not need to be there. And that's my review of Star Wars The High Republic The Rising Storm. It was enjoyable. That's the best I can say about it. I really like the first half. The second half is just tons and tons of action. And it, yeah, a little disappointing in the way it ended as well because it left me wanting more, but it also left me wanting more in the fact that it felt like it was unfinished. So yeah, I do recommend this as a continuation of Light of the Jedi and of the High Republic. I do think this opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. I am eagerly anticipating whatever's next. I don't think they've announced what's next yet. So that's interesting. I think we already knew after Light of the Jedi what was coming. At this point, we don't know what's next. We know there's a young adult book coming out, coming out next month as of recording. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, High Republic, very interesting place right now. Remains to be seen how expansive this is gonna be, how long is this series gonna be. Is this the second part of a trilogy? I don't know. Is this the second part of 10 books? Again, I don't know, we don't have a clue. But it does feel like maybe this is gonna be a longer form thing because of the way that they are dragging things out, because of the way that it is dwelling on this one action moment. So yeah, I like this book, I enjoyed it, but it could have been much better. I preferred Light of the Jedi, if you want that comparison. If you've liked this review, why not follow my channel, subscribe to my channel rather, and give me a thumbs up as well, leave comments and feedback down below, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton. Until next time though, thanks for watching.